Good morning students. Welcome to SST. So simple tutorial. In the previous class, we have read about proto-industrialization and its features. There, we understood how was production carried out for the international markets even before factories were set up in England and Europe. Today, we will cover 1.1 the coming up of the factory and 1.2 the pace of industrial change. So open your books. When did the factories come up? The origin of the factories is dated around 1730s in Britain and cotton textile industry was the first to develop in the era of factory production. Raw cotton imports in Britain rose from 2.5 million pounds in 1760 to 22 million pounds in 1787. This imported cotton was processed into cloth and supplied to international market. Cloth made of cotton became the leading export of Britain. The coming up of a factory system was not a sudden phenomenon. It grew gradually with a number of inventions. A number of changes within the process of production enabled this industry to grow fast. New inventions and technology increased the efficacy of each step of production process, particularly in textile industries. Here, each step in the production chain, namely carding, twisting, spinning and rolling was benefited. Naturally, this had an impact on the output. These enhanced the productivity of labor. Output per worker increased and thus their incomes increased. Consequently, there was more incentive for labor to work in the industry. Machines made it possible to produce strong threads and yarn. Then Richard Arkwright created the cotton mill. This factory was one of the first factories where the production process of clothes was done under one roof. Thus, it was the first factory to use a continuous process from raw material to finished product in a series of operations. This was unlike the phase of proto-industrialization, when different processes were carried out at different locations by different craftsmen. It will also be interesting to know that it was one of the first instances of the working day being determined by the clock instead of the daylight hours. So with the setting up of the cotton mills, it became possible to establish all the processes at one place under one roof. When everything came under one roof, management of things became easier. It allowed for careful supervision over the production process and a watch over quality and regulation of labor. All of these things were not possible or you can say difficult to do when production was scattered in the countryside. This cotton industry remained the leading sector in the first phase of industrialization which lasted up to the mid of 19th century. The second phase was led by iron and steel industry. In the year 1840, there was expansion of railways in Britain. But in the year 1860, even there was expansion of railways in colonies. Railway and infrastructure needed iron and steel and thus from 1840s the demand for iron and steel increased rapidly. By 1873, Britain was importing iron and steel worth about 77 million pounds, which was double the value of its cotton exports. But this new industry could not easily displace the traditional industries. The reason being the, techno the technology that was developing was very costly. Less than 20% of the total workforce was employed in the technologically advanced industries. Textile production was still being carried out within domestic units. Students, with this kind of development, you can well understand the pace of industrial change. The traditional setup continued for several decades before it was fully replaced by modern factory system. 
the traditional sector were not technologically stagnant either. Innovations and improvements were constant and the driving force in the non-mechanized sectors like food processing, building, pottery, glasswork, tanning, furniture making, etc. Technological changes in the steam-powered and metal works industry were slow because of the cost of the new machineries. All these machines were expensive to maintain because of the frequent repairs they needed. They were not as effective as their inventors and manufacturers claimed. On the other hand, labor was cheap and readily available, so the industrialists relied on the older forms of production. An example can be seen in the case of steam engine improved by James Watt. The steam engine was patented by James Watt in 1781. But by the beginning of the 19th century, there was no more than 321 steam engines all over England, of which the bulk was used in the mines. Later on, Watt's industrialist friend, Matthew Bolton, manufactured the new model, but for years it had no buyers. Thus, we see that the very invention that bought revolution was slow to be accepted by the industrialists. I hope you have understood the lesson discussed now. Let us now see the probable questions from this part of lesson. <coughs> 1. How did new invention and technology help in setting up the new factory concept? 2. Why was new technology slow to be accepted by industrialists? 3. Explain the pace of industrialization in England. With this, we finish the topic that was planned for today. In the next class, we will move further to discuss Unit 2, Hand Labor and Steam Power. Till then, keep reading and have a nice time. Thank you.